right, right now we're going to keep the buzz going here at the studios. Uh, we're joined by Kim Lehman, who is an author, an educator, and a musician as well. Mm -hmm. And we're going to learn about experimenting with bees. And yes. uh, you have a, a fabulous book, Beekeeper's Lab, and it's chock full of activities for the whole family, right? Exactly. There's activities all centered around bees mm -hmm. and the hive. Okay. So there are things to do with honey and pollination and pollen and uh, experiments, oh, beeswax. You've brought a wide array of really fun things that would really involve kids, but would be fun for parents as well. Exactly. The first thing we're going to talk about is something that you know I've heard about before, but uh, it's it's hard to get my head around. It. That is, you know, everybody wants to plant flowers for pollinators, for the bees, um, thinking that they have to have set colors, but bees see colors entirely differently than we do, right? Yes, they do. Yeah. So a bee has two compound eyes okay. that sees color, mm -hmm. and then they have three little eyes on top of their head called Wait cell eye. Three, five eyes? Five eyes. Okay. And those cell eyes sense lightness and mm -hmm. dark. Mm -hmm. So bees can't really see red like we can, okay. but they can see something in the color spectrum that we cannot see, ah. and that is ultraviolet. Oh, okay. The flowers have developed these UV landing strips, ah. nectar guides, because the plant depends on that bee to come to them of course. to have seeds to right. make more plants. Right. So they've developed these UV guides. It's like neon, neon lights. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> flashing neon over here. <laughs> so if you want to just get a little idea of what the bee sees, sure. you can use a UV Flashlight, right? And you can shine it. It works best really in dark. Okay. And you can shine it on the flowers and you can see a little bit about what a bee sees. Right, okay. There are also optical illusions that have to do with bees. Right. So okay. when I'm working with young children, I want to reinforce the concept of the flower needs the bee and the bee needs the flower. Okay. The flower needs the bee to create seeds to have more flowers, right. and the bee needs the flower because it's their food source. Okay. So if Makes you just draw a bee on one side of a card, mm -hmm. cardstock, flower on the other, tape a straw onto it, and if you just move it very quickly, it looks like the bee Ooh. is on the flower. Forget the kids, you've got me <laughs> hooked. What can I do for you? <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome, and fun. And, and some, simple. Right. Right, you know, and um, I would, again, I think you can entertain adults as well as kids with that. I mean, if people will look at uh, kitties on the internet, why not a bee on a straw? Exactly. <laughs> okay, very good. Well, speaking of um, fun with bees, you've brought a balloon there to uh, illustrate a particular point about bees as well. And it's not just that they make good party favors. <laughs> right. right. Okay. So when a bee flies through the air, mm -hmm. it actually takes on a positive charge. And flowers are slightly negative. Mm -hmm. So when the bee gets close to the flower, positive, negative, right. opposites attract. Right. The pollen will actually jump onto the bee's body so that the bee can Leaky. then carry it to another flower for pollination. These flowers are pretty clever. I agree, yeah. and so are the bees too. <laughs> right. It's so like... you can illustrate that by just taking a paper plate and putting a flower, you can draw a flower, I used a photo. Okay. Put some pepper there to represent the pollen. Okay. And then you want to charge up the balloon. So you okay. can use a Careful piece of wool, the balloon. you can use your hair, you can use the carpet. Okay. And then just get it close to that Pollen. I can hear it touching. I can hear it too. Yeah. There you go. Pollination right uh, there. A little bit of pepper on the bee's belly. <laughs> exactly. Okay. To move from one flower to another. Now there's an, uh, an apple beside you for a reason and uh, this is, you can learn a lot about different plant families just by this experiment. Yes, you okay. can. Okay. So you take an apple and you cut it through what I call the equator. You cut it down okay. the middle to see how well pollinated this apple is. Okay. So what you do is you pull out all the seeds that you can find and you're looking for fully developed seeds. Mm -hmm. You don't, if it's just a shriveled up seed, it's not a viable seed. It's not going to sure. grow into another right. tree. 
And so uh, the apple was a member of the, oh, this is not very pollinated. <laughs> okay. The apple is a member of the rose family. Okay. So all the flower parts are in multiples of five. And you can see a perfect star with five rays exactly. on it at the center of the apple, right? And so if it's fully developed, each one of these little seed pockets will have two seeds. So there's 10 seeds all together. Mm -hmm. And then if you look very closely, you can see a little dot, a little dark dots. And there's 10 of them, and that's where the stamen bundle was attached. Wow. So, so there's a remnant of the apple blossom inside the apple. Yes. So this apple is not very you. pollinated. Uh huh. I only see two viable Lazy seeds. Lazy bees. <laughs> I only see two viable seeds in this. And it just varies. And you can do experiments. You can cut different apples. You mm -hmm. can experiment with different kinds of apples. What a great way to teach kids, though. Yeah. And then you have you know, like your snack ready to go. Well, there's all sorts of uh, things about pollination, and there's a magic trick involved as well that you can share with our audience. Yes. Because I'm always looking for ways to reinforce pollination okay. Okay. and the connection between flowers and bees, because I think that's really an important thing that we're sure. all connected. Of course. So. This is my little magic trick. Okay. So we have an apple blossom. Okay. So we're going to put the apple blossom in our special change envelope. Okay. And what does that blossom need for pollination? A bee. Exactly. So we have our honey bee. <laughs> okay. Flies to the flower. Okay. And we can say our magic word. Abracadabra. Pollination. Oh. Okay. <laughs> pollination. Okay. Abracadabra. <laughs> Zimity Zam. Tell me what you need. I will do it. <laughs> Turn into an apple. Ah. If you can. Okay. I can imagine how entertaining this would be with a room full of kids. I bet they eat it up quite literally. Oh, they Sorry. love <laughs> that magic. Okay. They, they're just so amazed. Ooh okay. And all. Speaking of eat it up, they're also the book also has recipes for simple treats. Uh-huh. And we have an example of that over here. And uh, tell me about the ingredients to make some of these things. You can make a really simple, fast, delicious honey treat mm -hmm. by just taking about a half a cup of peanut butter, or nut butter, half a cup of honey, mm -hmm. put a cup of powdered milk, a cup of oatmeal, mix it all together with your hands. Mm -hmm. You can. It's so forgiving, you can add coconut, you can add dried um, mm, fruit. You just mix it up, roll it into balls, <laughs> and you have this delicious honey treat. Well, it quick and easy. Quick and easy indeed, and it looks delicious. And uh, next to the treats, um, you have lots of different of honeys available, all different colors. Why the co different colors? Well, in the United States, there's about 300 different varieties of honey. So if you have okay. yes, so you have different flowers make okay. different nectar, mm -hmm. make different colors and flavors of honey. Okay. So I brought orange blossom. Mm -hmm. And I brought yopon and mesquite to show the differences in the color. And you can taste them. There's a di mm -hmm. different flavor as well. Artisanal honey. Artisanal honey. Is exactly. this made by like little hipster bees? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. You know, you can't have regular honey anymore if you can have yopon honey, right? Mm. That would be very authentic honey. But I will say, <laughs> for many reasons, I will say that I particularly think that wildflower is the best for the bees and for people involved. Why is that? Because with wildflower honey, you're getting a lot of the different uh, pollen from the different flowers. Okay. And also because with the wildflower honey, it, it's a little less disruptive for the bees, I think. Okay. Nice to know about all the different varieties. 300 varieties this is a little mind blowing. Mm -hmm. um, I understand that you have a little bit of a musical strain in your background, and we're here in the studios where Austin City Limits was born, and uh, so you are now performing on the Austin City Limits set. <laughs> How exciting! <Yeah. laughs> oh, the honey bee is fabulous and great. From flower to flower, they pollinate to make the food, to make the seeds. Our tiny treasures, the honey bees. <laughs> How much fun has this been? This is great. So the book again is Beekeeper's Lab, 
and I really recommend it to people. And I'm, I'm sure you must have a website as well. We'll post that on online. But thanks so much for being on Central Texas Gardener. Oh, it's an honor. Thank it's you. It's been delightful. <laughs> okay, my, next it's Stephanie. Mm -hmm.